Hi, welcome to Rocky Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Um, today's video is called uh, Great Album Closes. Uh, now, um, my last video was Great Album Openers, so great songs that kicked off hard rock and metal albums. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, the songs that ended albums that I really like. So the very last song on an album, um, and you know, sometimes you can not be expecting too much. Um, and uh, you hear the song, and it's like, wow, this is a fantastic way to end the album. So, um, yeah, it's a little, little bit more challenging, perhaps, this one, because, uh, you know, usually the best songs are at the start of, of an album. That's what I've certainly found from when I think about the, uh, the albums in my collection. Uh, often my favorite tracks are on side one uh, at the start, uh, but not all, the, not all the time, of course. And uh, this is definitely one of those times where perhaps the best song is the last song. Uh, before I um, uh, show my first selection, I also just want to do a little shout out. I um, just want to thank um, Aaron. Thanks for the uh, shout out on your, your channel, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, and I, 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 I'm really um, uh, pleased that you have enjoyed the videos and... Um, that uh, some other people have also um, found my channel by your channel. So thanks for putting the word out. And um, if you're new to my channel, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, there's a few there to go back and check out. And um, yeah, if you want to subscribe, that would be great. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. All right. Um, so first selection. Uh, I've gone for a well-known band. This is from their probably, I think, their most successful album. This is their second album called The Great Radio Controversy, uh, and it's called Tesla, and the track is called The Party's Over, uh, which is, you know, a fantastic uh, way to, a song title to finish an album, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, this is a hard rocking song, great riff that kicks it off, um, and I, I, I love this album, uh, and I remember thinking when I was listening to the album for the first time, yeah, this is a this is a this is a good album, you know. And their first their debut album was also really good. And I was just going, ah, oh, you know, I don't know, is this is this one better than the first album? It was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty even. Uh, and I still probably would say that right now is probably those first two Tesla albums are. Um, it's it's hard to kind of say which one is better, but it, uh, it's a great finishing track. Um, the party's over. Yeah, really love that song. Um, great band, and yeah, like I say, those first two albums, um, just consistent quality throughout it. But um, yeah, I just I just really love the party driver. It's not a song that you get uh, that you hear talked about very much, um, but yeah, for me, it's it's uh, one of my favourite Tesla songs. All right, um, now I have uh, with the songs that I'm uh, selected uh, for today. There's going to be 12 again just like they were for the great album openers um i've created a spotify playlist so you um and i did that for the great album openers as well so if you want to check some of these songs out uh check uh out the link that i'll put on the description for this video and um you can hear some of the songs um now there are like tesla for example isn't on there um and i think britney fox uh which is uh the one I'm going to show you now is also not in there. So um, there are a couple that's missing, but um, yeah, I think everything else is on there so you can listen to the songs. Okay, so yeah, as I um, just alluded to, there is a Britney Fox song on my top 12 album closes. And the song is from their debut album. And this is probably there again. Um, like Tesla's probably would be their most successful album. Uh, Britney Fox, the debut album. And the song is Hold On. And it's pretty short and to the point song. Again, just like uh, Tesla. Great riff to kick it off. Um, go straight into the chorus. Um, and it rocks really hard. And yeah, I, it's, it's uh, one of my favorite songs from this album. And yeah, just a kick-ass way to finish the album. So Britney Fox. Hold on. Um, next one I want to talk about is a song that actually does get, even though it's the album closer, it's the last song on the album, it does get talked about um, a fair bit as a really good song. Um, and maybe the album itself is not necessarily um, 
given uh, that much praise. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, but um, the, the last song on the album is sometimes, uh, I've heard people, many people actually um, comment that it is one of their favourite songs from the album. And um, the song is Reckless and the album is Jews, uh, Turbo and the artist is of course Jews Priest. So uh, Reckless, yeah, um, awesome hard rocking song to finish the album. Uh, Reckless was uh, at one point going to be on the Top Gun soundtrack um, but wasn't. Uh, would have been interesting, uh, you know, what uh, what it would have meant if that song had featured on that soundtrack, a very successful soundtrack. Uh, yeah, but just a uh, hard rocking song, and uh, yeah, it's kind of surprising. It's tacked on at the end of the album. I think this would have been a great single, could have been very successful um, had they released it as a single. Um, I think sometimes Judas Priest tours for singles, especially in the um, mid to late 80s, perhaps wasn't the best. And um, yeah, a lot of people, like I say, have uh, made a comment about that song and uh, how much they like it. So it's probably one of my favourite Judas Priest songs, that one. Alright, talking of um, favourites, this be one of my favourite bands. Definitely a, a, probably a top five band for me, just because they're so consistent. They put out so many great albums and have so many great songs. But yeah, you definitely can't match the the output, um, the, the um, albums they put out in the 80s. And the band is Wasp. And this is the final track from uh, The Headless Children. And it's called Rebel in the FDG. Real classic sort of Wasp's uh, song and sound. But there's sort of trademark kind of sound on that. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, on that, um, I'll just adjust this a little bit lost my stand so it's making it make things more complicated um yeah so um the they um very very sort of typical kind of wasp uh sound on the, on uh the song but for me um i love it it's uh the great riff blacky sounds awesome um and uh yeah great great way to finish the album um it's a slightly different album i guess to some of the albums they put out previously, a little bit more mature perhaps, um, and this is sort of maybe a little bit more like their old style, but um, yeah, I I really like it. Um, and of course, when I talk about album closes, you might have a version of this album, uh, especially if it's on CD that has bonus tracks, so then it's not the last song. So I'm just going. My selections are. The original last song on the album so yeah re-releases may have different last songs but because um, I know that this album had lots of um, had quite a few b-sides um, that may have then been tacked on when the album got re-released but I'm not counting those so this is when it was first released Rebel and the FDG was the final track all right uh, next track I'm going to talk about is from Alice Cooper and this was a, a bit of a comeback for him, really, wasn't it? Just before he had lots of success with Trash, I think a lot of people heard this album and thought, um, this is the kind of um, sound uh, I'd quite like to hear from Alice Cooper. He got a lot heavier, really cranked up the guitars, and the song I like on this, Roses on White Lace, is definitely a case of cranking up the guitars. Kane Roberts, um, yeah, really firing on all, on all the full cylinders. Uh, for that song, um, yeah, great riff again, and uh, I heard that, I was like, um, I heard, um, you know, Trash, and I, I sort of was going back, checking out um, the earlier Alice Cooper um, stuff, and I thought, uh, wow, that is, that is a rocking song, um, probably one of the heavier uh, Alice Cooper songs, and a great way to finish that album. Uh, next one. Uh, now, I don't really hear people talking about this song very much, and it's a band that people talk about a lot and, and uh, like, and, and they're quite well known. I'm talking about ACDC, and uh, probably not one, again, a little bit like Turbo. This album, um, Fly on the Wall, for some people, not one of their favourites. But, um, yeah, I, the last track, Send for the Man, is a, is a top track. Um, again, yeah, I guess it's got a lot of the elements I really like. Great riff to kick it off. And, um, yeah, just, um, yeah, really catchy. Um, 
just just a, it is a good way to finish the album but it's also a great song and um i don't mind that album in fact it's uh one of my favorite acdc albums um and that's probably my favorite track off the album so um yeah so i had to include that one all right next up um This is Ed Nugent, and if you can't lick him, lick him. Yeah, I'm not too sure about uh, the album title, um, or even the album cover, but um, I do like the last song on this album. Uh, it's actually a song written by Ted Nugent with uh, Richie Sambora and John Bon Jovi, and it's called That's the Story of Love. Uh, and I like this album. I think I, I felt like a lot of the songs did sound the same to some degree. Um, and I quite like the sound, but when it gets repeated a lot, it does get, um, you know, a little bit repetitive. But that's the story of love. Sounds a bit different, but it's still got a, you know, um, this is still a hard rocking song. Uh, yeah, it is melodic, but it's um, yeah, it, you know, sometimes you know you see John Bon Jovi in the song credits, and you 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 know you're not sure is it going to be um, is it just going to be a ballad, or is it going to be um, something that's uh, uh, rock and uh, this one does which is great um, and yeah I, I really it's my favorite track off the album and um, again one of those situations where you're, I'm sort of wondering to myself it's, it's commercial but it's heavy I can imagine the song being popular um, you've got that you know John Bon Jovi kind of um, uh, you know crossover there um, Sort of surprising it wasn't released as a single, unless maybe it was. I maybe I'm, I'm not aware of it, but um, could have been a big song. Now, um, this next uh, band, um, they are probably one of those bands that people will say should have been more successful, um, and they produced a fantastic album produced by Bob Rock. The late eighties, I think it came out, um, and uh, yeah, it was one of Bob Rock's first productions. Uh, it's Blue Murder, uh, and the song I'm talking about is Black Hearted Woman with John Sykes on guitar and vocals, and he really riffs uh, on that last song. Awesome riff, um, yeah. Very got that real sort of White Snake 1987 kind of vibe, but it's just a little bit heavier. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a kick-ass way to finish off the album, so, um, that's a real favourite of mine, um, from a good album. Again, one of those deals I'd probably say, if you ask me to pick my favourite track, it's that one, so it's the last song on the album, Black Hearted Woman. Alright, and there's lots of great songs on that album as well. Alright, um, next one, um, I'm, I'm sort of noticing maybe with some of these albums, and artists even, um, that, uh, you know, perhaps they've had, I'm showing albums that perhaps weren't that popular, uh, with the fans, um, or there's some controversy uh, about the album, uh, and, you know, uh, yeah, but, uh, this is another example, perhaps, because, uh, this band had lots of, uh, controversy about them, because, um, people said they sound a little bit like Led Zeppelin, but, um, but to me, they just sounded like a kick-ass hard rock band. And I'm talking about, of course, King, Kingdom Come. And I've gone for Stargazer off their second album. Now, some people said this was a little bit less. Uh, this album was a little bit less Led Zeppelin-y. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, like for me, I just think they, the band, band sounded fantastic. Great vocalists. Um, yeah, just I love the riffs. The, it's melodic, but heavy. And Stargaze is just an awesome way to finish the album. The, you know, fantastic riff. Uh, Lenny Wolf sounds awesome on it. Um, yeah, and there's lots of good songs on this album. Interestingly enough, I went with Stargazer, but I also, one of my other favourite uh, Kingdom Come songs is Shouted Out, and that's the last song of the first Kingdom Come album. So it was almost a bit of a toss-up, actually, which one to go for, because I didn't want to choose two Kingdom Come songs. Uh, so I went with Stargazer, just maybe just slightly like that one, just a little bit more. But um, they're both great album closers. Um, and yeah, we're checking out. So that one's Stargazer from Kingdom Come. 
Uh, now this song I've talked about maybe some of these um, some of the songs that I've talked about may perhaps should have been released as singles. But this one was and a well known artist. I'm talking about Ozzy Osbourne and Shot in the Dark. So from the Ultimate Sin. Um, and uh, yeah, really love the song. Um, this was a song brought to Ozzy um, by the bass guitar player uh, Full Susan. Susan, Susan. I'm not sure I'm saying his uh, name right, but um, he had originally um, performed or demoed this song with his previous band, um, and um, yeah. Uh, Ozzy got hold of it and um, it became an Ozzy Osbourne song. Um, yeah, and it's a great version. I mean, these guys do an awesome version of that song. It sounds amazing. Um, it you know, starts off kind of uh, with the, the keyboard coming in. It's, it's not a heavy start, but then the riff kicks in and um, yeah, uh, it sounds awesome. Um, I don't know why albums decide to not tell you the order of the tracks on the back of the album. I know some albums did that and this is one of them. So you wouldn't even know that Shot in the Dark was the final track. It's just They just randomly listed the songs uh, on the back cover, which I find a little bit annoying because um, you know I might not remember where the uh, the song I want to play is and it's like, well, I'm going to get it. What side am I going to put on? Um, I just, this little thing I don't like. I don't know why they do that. Um, and most bands or albums, they're not like that, but there's a few that are, and um, I don't quite get it. Maybe they make the album cover before they've actually decided on the track listing. That's possibly it. All right, but that was released as a single, and so is my next one. This is Kiss and Uh All Night. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's a Uh All Night um, uh, with an exclamation mark, of course. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what what's going on with Paul Stanley and his song titles uh, around about this time, but um, definitely nothing wrong with his songwriting. Uh, awesome riff. Um, he sounds fantastic, and um, was released as a single. There's a video for it. Um, pretty entertaining video, I think. Um, so yeah, and it's the final song of the album. Another song that actually there's a video for, and it's a quality song, uh, not quality album. This one, uh, almost yeah, pretty much every song is fantastic. This is uh, Queensrÿche and Operation Mindcrime and Eyes of a Stranger. So um, I don't really think I need to talk about that too much. Um, it's, this is a, a, a fantastic album, classic album, and yeah, like I say, every song on that album is really good. So they were always gonna. You never really thought when you were hearing that album that there's going to be filler on there. That they were going for quality tracks throughout the whole thing. And that's certainly the case with Iron for Stranger. Alright, I'll finish up there because that is uh, that is my 12 um, uh, great album closes from hard rock and metal albums. I think pretty much everything I've shown you uh, is probably just from the eight, mid to late 80s, uh, I would think. Um, so that's interesting. Um, but uh, yeah. I um, hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll be back soon with another one. Alright, catch you later. Bye.